Question 2 is about Venn diagrams. If we look at part A, it says explain what M intersection D dash means in this context. M intersection D dash is the shaded moon shaped region shown. But the question asks, explain what is meant by M intersection D dash in context. This is the students who study mathematics and not drama. Note this is not the number of students that study mathematics and not drama. And it is not a probability. Let's look at B part 1. One of these students has chosen at random. Find the probability that this student studies exactly two of these subjects. The red shaded region represents the number of students who study two subjects. The 13, the 10 and the 6 would represent the students that study one subject only and the five is the number of students that study none of the three subjects. We wanted the probability of the student studying two subjects that is the red region, the two and the four, that is six and there were 40 students altogether so the probability is 6 out of 40, or 3 out of 20. We now want the probability that a student does French or Maths, or both. So this is the yellow region, and we see in there, there is 13, 2, 10 and 4, which is 29 students. So the probability is 29 out of 40. Now part C. Determine whether studying mathematics and studying drama are statistically independent for these students. Does the probability of M times the probability of D equal the probability of M in the section D? The probability of M is the green region, the 10, the 2 and the 4. So the probability of M is 16 out of 40. The probability of D is the blue region, the 4 and the 6, which is 10 out of the 40. The intersection of M and D is the purple region, the probability of M intersection D is 4 out of 40. Does the probability of M times the probability of D equal the probability of M intersection D? The probability of M is 16 out of 40, the probability of D is 10 out of 40, we times these together we get 160 over 1600, which is one tenth, and that is in fact the probability of M intersection D. Since the probability of M times the probability of D does equal the probability of M intersection D, they are statistically independent. Let's look at this again. For the sets A and B, on the Venn diagram shown. The probability of A is 4 out of 8. The probability of B is 2 out of 8, which is a half times a quarter, which is 1 eighth. The probability of A intersection B is also 1 eighth, so A and B are independent. But let's consider what would happen if we moved one of the three A's in the A only region and put it in the B only region. The Venn diagram would then look like this. Now the probability of A is 3 out of 8 and the probability of B is also 3 out of 8. So the probability of A times the probability of B is 9 out of 64. But the probability of A intersection B is still 
1 out of 8. 9 out of 64 doesn't equal 1 out of 8, so A and B are not independent. So all we have done is transferred 1 in the A only region to the B only region, but we got a different outcome in terms of independence. So what does it mean if uh, two events are independent? Well, the classic example is, say, tossing a coin and throwing a dice. So as far as we know, these things don't affect each other in any physical sense. And so if we want to know the probability of getting a six from the dice and a head from the coin, then that would be the same as the probability of getting a 6 times the probability of getting a head, which would be 1 out of 6 times 1 out of 2, which would be 1 out of 12. And if we did a little table of outcomes, then that would make sense. So there are 12 outcomes, only one of them satisfies our six and a head. So that gives us one out of the 12 possibilities. In the example we've just seen, uh, it's a bit more complicated. We don't know what A and B are. We can't make any sort of assumption on whether they are connected to each other in some way and therefore not independent. But how we can think of it is that A is independent of B if the probability of A is not affected by whether B happens, and vice versa. So if we look at the first example, then the probability of A is the number of A's, 3 plus 1, over the total, which is 4 out of 8, which is 1 out of 2. Now, if we just restrict ourselves to the situation where we know that B has happened, so that means we're only looking at the red circle there, so that's B. Now in this circumstance, and I'm going to write a symbol which I'll explain in a moment, we have only one A and one plus one outcomes, which is one out of two. And so these are the same. Now this symbol here you will meet in A2. And we can say it as the probability of A given B. And it's called conditional probability. And what happens with conditional probability is what I've just illustrated. The given that, which is the B part, so given that B has happened, what's the probability of A? That means we have a restricted sample space. So in this situation, the original sample space is the whole box. And this is denoted in different ways, sometimes with the Greek omega, which means all, and sometimes with the Greek letter psi, or even just an ordinary letter s. So that's the whole space, the whole sample we're looking at. And that relates to the finding the probability of A. When we restrict ourselves to just B, so we're into the conditional given that situation, then we only look at the red circle in this case. But what we see is that we get the same probability for A happening when we restrict ourselves to B or when we consider the whole situation. 
So that means that independence can also be described as when the probability of A is the same as the probability of A given B. And in fact, there is a symbol for independence, and so we can write independence either like this, or sometimes it's written like this. And you can check for yourself that in this example, if we worked out the probability of B for the whole space, we would find, well, you can check, is that the same as the probability of B given A? Now, if we look at the example that wasn't independent, then we will see that in this case, the probability of A would be 2 plus 1 over the total, 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is 3 out of 8. But the probability of A given B, so we're now just looking at in this set, is 1 out of 1 plus 2, which is 1 out of 3. And so in this situation, we have that the probability of A is not equal to the probability of A given B, and therefore A is not independent of B. Now don't worry if this is a bit difficult, because you'll cover this properly, or cover the conditional probability properly in A2. But this sort of connects independence through to that.